This video will serve as a answer key, as a video answer key for our chapter three practice test for FST. Uh, so let's begin. First question on the practice test is using your graphing calculator, determine the intervals for which f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3x squared is increasing and for which it is decreasing. So we need a graphing calculator for this one. And I'll go ahead and enter in my function. So I go to my y equals screen and I type in x to the fourth. And I have a new operating system, so I have to move over. Minus 3x squared. And then I graph that. And this is what I get, okay? So I'm going to zoom in on this in this area right here, okay? So um, I'm going to reduce the size of my window uh, just to go from negative 5 to positive 5 in both the x and y directions, okay? And I think that might give me enough of my graph. Okay, there we are. Great. Um, so here is my function. I'm going to actually just grab a picture of that and put it in to look at. Okay. All right, fantastic. So looking at this graph, now remember we always read our graph from left to right when talking about increasing and decreasing intervals. So as I look at this graph, it's first decreasing until it bottoms out right here. And then it's increasing until it tops out. And then it is decreasing again until it bottoms out. And then it is increasing again. All right? So increasing, sorry, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. All right? So I have actually four areas to say. Uh, that, so I'm going to have f of x is decreasing for x less than whatever this value is. I have to figure out what that point is. Okay, And then I will have f of x is increasing for whatever this value is. I don't know what that is. Um, so x greater than whatever that is. And less than, this looks like it's at 0. All right, we'll have to go back and find out what this value is. Okay. And then uh, after that, we say f of x is decreasing again for x greater than 0, but less than whatever this other mystery point is. We'll have to find that. And then f of x is increasing again after that mystery point. So x greater than whatever this second mystery point is. So let's go find that mystery point, all right? So I brought my calculator back up, and let me get my big screen going here so it's a little bit easier to follow, all right? So view, big screen, there we go. All right, so here's my big screen. So I need to find, again, this point and this point. This is a relative minimum, so I'm going to tell it to calculate that minimum. Second, trace for calculate. Minimum is choice three. And left bound, it looks like the x value of negative 2 is to the left of it. So I'm going to type in negative 2 for my x. And then right bound, uh, it looks like 0 is an x value to the right of it. So I'll type in 0. And then my guess is it looks like it's at about negative 1.5 or so. So negative 1.5 for my x value that I'm going to guess at. And it comes out as negative 1.22 approximately. Okay, so this mystery value was an x value of negative 1.22. That's just the x, not the y. Okay, I've got a hunch this is symmetrical, so it's probably a positive 1.22, but uh, I don't know. Lately, I don't like to trust my hunches. So let's go ahead and calculate this other minimum here. So second, calculate minimum, which is choice three. Uh, again, I need a value to the left of it. I'll use 0. That's a good x value for the left of it. To the right of it, I'll choose 2 for my right boundary. My guess? <laughs> Let's go for it. I'm going to put in 1.22, and we'll see. Enter. 
Hey, I was right. Same thing. It is symmetrical. So 1.22 positive this time. Okay, so this came out as positive 1.22. So going back and filling in, x is increasing, uh, sorry, f is decreasing up until that negative 1.22. So I'll put that in, negative 1.22. And then I was increasing from negative 1.22 up until 0. And then I was decreasing from 0 to positive 1.22. And then after 1.22, it was increasing again. Okay? Great. So there's the first question on the practice test. Next up, uh, using your graphing calculator, name with ordered pairs and classify the relative minimum or maximum and then absolute minimum or maximum of the same function. All right, yeah, the same function, yeah. Okay, so, well, that's really cool because I kind of already found some of it, all right. We've got these minimums here. Uh, so let me copy this over again, okay, just so we can write on it. Um, all right, cool. So we found already from that last work that this was at, okay, we had our, this is a minimum, and so we have a minimum, this is an absolute minimum, it doesn't go lower than this, even over here, so absolute minimum uh, at, and this was at positive 1.22 approximately, negative 2.25, and then this one over here, was also an absolute minimum, and that was, now I've always gone back and forth in my head on if it's the same thing on both sides, is that absolute or relative? I think it's absolute. Um, somebody might argue that it's relative. I'd be interested to hear those arguments, so if you have thoughts on that, leave them in the comments below. Uh, this was at negative 1.22 and negative 2.25. And the only other mystery one we have here is this relative minimum, or relative maximum, sorry. This is a relative max, and, because, and it's relative because it goes higher on either side of it. It's not the highest point of my graph. So I think that's at zero, zero, but let's just double check, okay? So I'm gonna go on my calculator here, and I'm gonna go second, calculate, a maximum, which is choice four. Left boundary, I'm going to say negative one is to the left of it, and positive one is to the right of it, and my guess was that it was at zero, and let's double check. Yep, zero, zero. Okay, great. So we have a relative maximum at zero, zero. Okay, so that was number two. Number three, without using your graphing calculator, describe the end behavior. Now, we've already seen this on the graphing calculator, so we know what it looks like, but on the test, I may, uh, I won't let you use the graphing calculator for this part of the question, okay? So is the degree odd or even? So I'm going to look here. The biggest exponent we have is 4, which is an even number, so it's even. All right. And then, so we know from that that the function heads either up on either end or down on both ends. It is the same thing on both sides, okay? But now the leading coefficient is a positive or negative. So I look at the term that has the biggest degree, which is happens to be the first one in this case, and the coefficient of that term, so what is it multiplied by? Now, although there's nothing written there, we assume that there's a positive one. If not, nothing's written there, we assume it's a positive one. So this is positive. So I already said that even is going to mean it's either going up on both sides of the function or it's going down on both ends of the function. But I just said it's positive, so that means it's going up on both sides. So as x goes to positive infinity, so as x, as we head to the right on the graph, f of x is also headed to positive infinity because it's going up. Okay? And as x goes to negative infinity, so as we head to the left on the graph, f of x is also headed up again. Walk through those steps would be okay. Now, if this was an odd function, we'd be headed in opposite directions on either end of the graph. Okay, um, it would.
would be, for instance, it would end up looking like this or like this. Okay. And we already saw the picture of this graph. Let's just confirm our findings that is headed up on either end of the graph. And we look here, and yep, it's headed up, it's headed up. So we were right. Okay. All right, next question. Uh, where is the function not continuous and why? Well, this one screams out one of the cardinal rules in my math class is that you can't divide by zero. So this denominator, we can't let that equal zero. All right, so where is that going to equal zero? Well, let's solve a quick equation of 8x minus 24 equals zero to find that out. So that would be 8x equals positive 24. So x is 3. So we can't let x be 3. Okay. So f of x is discontinuous at x equals 3. Okay? Because um, because we'd end up dividing by 0. Let's keep going. Number five, what are the equations for the vertical and horizontal asymptotes? All right, so the vertical asymptote comes from the x value um, we can't put in for the denominator because we divide by zero. So uh, is that that discontinuity. So again, that's at x equals three. <clears throat> the horizontal asymptote, now that comes from when we plug in really big values of x, so the end behavior, what do we get? So if I plug in a value of x of like a million, this basically becomes 16 million over 8 million, which is 2. The other thing we learned uh, in class is that when the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, so when these types of problems, we could just divide those leading coefficients. So 16 divided by 8, which is 2, so our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2. Here we go, quick problem. Number 6, here comes the big one, graphing this function. <clears throat> Alright, so when you're given a rational function of this type, the first thing you want to do is to identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So the vertical asymptote, uh, what x cannot be, okay, is that x equals, where is this equal to 0? So we say 3x plus 1, where does that equal 0? That'd be 3x equals negative 1, so x is equal to negative 1 third. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1 third. And then I'm going to divide the leading coefficients, 12 divided by 3, to get the horizontal asymptote of y equals 4. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw those in. So vertical asymptote at negative one-third, okay? Uh, let me get a line tool going here. Line, all right, negative one-third is going to be about right here, okay? And then horizontal asymptote, so that, well, let me write that in there. That's at x, you always should write that in there. Please do that on the test so I know you know what you're talking about. And then the horizontal asymptotes at 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. Let me make that a little bit thicker so that it's easier to see. There we go. Cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and plot some points now. So in the middle of my input-output table, uh, I'm wanting to put the horizontal asymptote. So I've got 1, 2, 3 points I want to plot to the right of it and then three points to the left. So I'm going to put my x equals negative one-third here. And then one, two, I need one more value down here. Okay, cool. So some values to the left. Let's go negative one, negative two, negative three. And to the right, let's do positive one, two, and three. Okay? And so now I just need to crank out some numbers here. Grab your calculator. 
and we're going to go to our main calculation screen and let's put these in. So I'm going to have 12 times a negative 3, uh, 12 times negative 3 plus 3 divided by 3 times negative 3 plus 1, enter. So that's 4.125. 4.125. I'll do the same thing with negative 2. So I'm going to call it that same thing. Change my negative 3 to a negative 2. Enter 4.2. Let's do the same thing with negative 1 instead of negative 2. All right. And that gives me 4.5. Obviously, we can't do anything here because that's my vertical asymptote. I'm going to do the same thing with positive 1. I'm just going to get rid of that negative sign here. It gives me 3.75. Now I'll do it with positive 2. Let's overwrite that 1 with a 2. That's 3.8. 857 and then do it one more time with 3. 3 and 3. Okay, cool. That gives me 3.9. All right, now we need to plot those points. So negative 3 gave me 4.125, which is just a hair over that horizontal asymptote and then Negative 2 was just a tiny bit more, and then I get a tiny bit more at negative 1. But I know what this looks like. It's going to stay like this, and then it curves up against that vertical asymptote. It doesn't cross it, and then it's going to hug up against that horizontal asymptote as it heads that way. Now on the other side, we've got 1, 3.75, so that's about right here, 3 and 3 quarters. Then we've got uh, 2 and a little bit more, and then 3 and a tiny bit more. So it's getting really close already to that horizontal asymptote. And here it goes. And then we know it's going to hug up against that as it heads that way. Okay? There we go. It's graphed. Good enough for me. I, I just want to see three points to the left of the vertical asymptote, three points to the right of the vertical asymptote. I hope that helps. Look forward to seeing how you do on the test. Good luck, have fun, and personal.